why did you decide na mag-pursue ng isang teaching profession or work? Gusto, gusto mo yung nag-travel, travel, gano'n? Hindi naman gusto uh, nag-travel, travel. Gusto ko lang dumal na hell. That's right. Hello, hello. Ako si David. I am a third year student and I am also a member of YSES. In this video naman, we're going to be talking about the different career paths that you can take when you graduate from computer science. For this video, we're going to be talking to someone very special to me. Well, special! <laughs> and uh, he is my mentor sa org and currently siya is a um, very amazing teacher. He is none other than Mr. Cedric Gaza. Hi Kuya Ced! <laughs> Would you mind introducing yourself? Um, hi, I'm Cedric. You can call me Ced or Kuya Ced or Sir <laughs> Ced. I'm a graduate of BS Computer Science at UPLB. Uh, I, graduate, I graduated cum laude. Currently a high school teacher at UP Rural High School. I teach uh, information technology subjects. Uh, we have courses about HTML programming. Uh, currently, I am teaching Python for grade 8 Python. students. Python? Grade also, 8? Talaga? Yes, grade 8 students. Oh. Uh, we also teach um, introductory courses like how to use Google applications or how to solve simple discrete math problems. Why did you decide na mag-pursue ng isang teaching profession or work? Actually, may mer- layers yung story kung bata ko. Bata ko pumili magturo. So the first part of the story is when I was in third year, I was a struggling student financially. So nagaplay ako ng BWST scholarship. Ang return of service mo ay kailangan magturo ng senior high sa sa any school. So let's say for example, ang engineering ay five years, di ba? Since ang comms ay four years lang naman, so two years lang naman yung return of service. Okay. Yun nga, di kinuha ko nga yung teaching na uh, teaching part ng scholarship uh, without knowing na um, magutuho talaga ako in the future. <laughs> Kasi parang inisip ko na na bahala na. Bahala na. <laughs> so, kailangan ko ng pera sa DUSD kasi sobrang naghihirap talaga ako nun financially. Mm-hmm. So, fast forward, fourth year in college. Ginawa ko nung fourth year, basically, nag-org, nag-ACADS. The first part ng story ay parang mayroon tutorials yung org kung tay 57 yata yun or 56 tapos nagaanap yung org namin na nang para magtuturo so yun wait why says ba yan or iba pang org why says ah sige sige as para sabi ko ay sige gusto ko itry para na for forcey ko na nun na ay oh nga malapit ako ng graduate kasi claiming it na ako graduate na ako so nisip ko na kailangan ko na experience kung paano kung paano magturo <laughs> Yun yung first time ko magturo in front of a huge crowd. Previously, ang tinuturuan ko lang, kunyari may mga org mates ako na, kunyari nalulokas sa ganitong subject, ay di sige, tuturuan ko kayo niyan. At those times, parang sinabi ko sarili ko na, masaya naman siya in a way, na, na parang feeling mo natututo naman yung tinuturuan mo, di ba? Pero when I thought, dun sa huge crowd ng mga freshman students, I thought na, Wow. Gato pala yung feeling. Parang ang rewarding niya in a sense. Kasi parang nakita ko sila lahat na parang nakikinig na mabuti. Um, nagtatanong, nagpa-participate. Parang sabi ko nun, ano sa'yo pala sa feeling magturo ng ganito? Kasi parang sabi ko nun, if hindi ko to nagustuhan, babayaran ko yung scholarship. Para di ka mag-return of service, babayaran mm-hmm. siya. Uh, di naman siya likely na nangyari kasi matipid naman ako tao. So ayoko rin naman siyang bayaran. Uh, yeah, parang 100,000 din yung binigay sa akin ng DOS team. So ayoko, ayoko rin sayang din naman. So sabi ko, edi sige, pupurso ka na magturo ng... Magturo na nito. During my fourth year in stay, di ba at fourth year, gumagawa na ng SP. Mm-hmm. or parang nag-research na parang bas- basta di siya tinuro ever sa amin yung research part uh-uh. as in first time ko lang yun marinag in my whole life so mm-hmm. ito talaga yung first time ko na mag-research talaga unexpected thing happened is that nagustuhan ko siya <laughs> So sabi ko nun, maybe maybe this was um, a really good idea. Anyway, so yun yung tatlong factors. Um, uh, kailangan ka magturo, then gusto ko magturo, then gusto ko mag-research. Now na you're a teacher sa Jan sa rural, so kamusta naman yung workload? Was it anything like you were expecting? Before, before pa ako ako sa rural, I have this misconception na, I, would, I don't want, I, I don't want um, an office job. Kasi di ba kung yari kung sa ang ang trabaho mo, pag mag ang magigitrabaho mo, unang kung naisip ay 
buong araw ka lang nakaupo. <laughs> gusto, gusto mo yung nagtatravel, travel, gano'n. Hindi naman gusto Para... nagtatravel, travel. Gusto ko lang dumal dahil. <laughs> <laughs> Pero syempre, parang unang pasok ko sa rural. Hindi naman ako teacher trained. Trained lang ako mag-code. Trained lang ako hmm. mag-develop. No? I know that I'm pretty good at developing things, solving algorithms. I wasn't expecting a lot of things when I entered the job. Hmm. Uh, ang, ang gusto ko lang matutunan nun ay, how do I teach better? I was teaching grade 9 kids at that time, so um, what I did was, kasi napapansin ko talaga may nagsistruggle talaga. E di, ang ginagawa ko nun, I, I led most of my time for their consultations para maturuan ko sila. At, ma- at that point, ang way ko on how to approach teaching is that, sige, tuturuan kita at any time possible na free ka. You have to be uh, focused, you have to be... Um, you have to be always there for them when, whenever they ask questions. We understand that there are multiple ways on how to teach kids on how to program. And so, uh, we're slowly trying to integrate that in our curriculum. Ang una na tinuro sa inyo ay flowcharts, pseudocodes. Mm-hmm. So, there are actually other ways on how to teach kids programming. Kaya yung block-based coding. Yung website ba yun? Oo, uh, yung parang may maze, uh, tapos may bird, tapos may... Tapos may, bu- may bubuha ang mga blocks. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So that's called block-based uh, design and learning in code. Scratch ba yun? Oo, scratch. So there are students na in my class today na alam na kung paano mag-Python. So for me, when I was when I was comparing myself to them, for me in 14 years old, when I was 14 and to them na 14 years old and those 14 years old know how to code I just can't help to be amazed by these kids who are bright and smart and talented ayun eh, syempre, sobrang proud ako sa kanila amazing <laughs> naman kasi talaga yung nagtuturo sa kanila diba <laughs> <laughs> ayun wala lang parang when you think about it mahirap talaga maging teacher diba parang you have to deal with all of these kids Iba-iba yung buhay, ganun. And you really have to find a way para yun, matuto sila. Kasi sa college, madalas, parang ito, bala ka na dyan, parang ganun. Pero, yun, sa high school talaga, if sa high school yung bata hindi mo naturuan ng maayos, minsan mawawalan siya ng gana in the future, I think. So, ayun, good job, Kuya said, for doing so well as a teacher. And also, I've been reading about in nga, teaching and yung methods na ginagamit. And I always seem to read na the methods na we use today are obsolete. What are your thoughts on this? Most students right now are, they have their phones. Um, the kids right now are exposed to technology. They're so they're exposed to the internet. When I first started teaching in rural is that, why don't we integrate technology more in our classrooms? Para mas improve pa yung delivery ng subject, di ba? So, yun yung una kong nakita. When it comes to teaching, we also have to take into consideration that although yes, exposed ngayong kabataan ngayon sa technology, you also have to take into consideration for those who are not exposed in technology. Hindi mm-hmm. naman lahat may privilege magkaroon ng phone or uh, computer sa bahay. So, you also have to take into consideration their literacy. For some people na hindi naman exposed sa ganyang bagay. So, isa pa yung learning curve para sa kanila mm-hmm. na kailangan pa nilang matutunan kung paano gumamit ng computer at ng cellphone para lang matuto. I, I thought na natuturo na yung um, tawag dito naturo na yung basics ng Word, Excel sa elementary na yung tinuturo diba but I was surprised that there are some students na hindi sila natuturo, naturoan ng ganun lalo na ngayon we are increasingly need uh, there's an increase on the need on information literacy on everyone diba he, those are the things that are not uh thought in in schools so maybe it maybe it's now time for us to teach those if i remember correctly uh may subject ako in high school yung mil mm-hmm. yeah maganda nga na meron na siya sa senior high pero ang concern ko naman dun ay oh what Masado is the lowest age by na? senior uh-huh. high uh-huh. Parang uh-huh. almost everyone are using it right now so uh-huh. uh, where are those students na ganun ka bata on how to use their data properly what about naman kunyari for the way you give out examinations I mean online especially what can I say is that teachers are continually improving their modules especially na um, remote learning na tayo ngayon diba may part na adjustments for the students may part na adjustments for the teachers and for the teachers part the 
uh, one of the main issues is that how do we prevent cheating from from students kasi nga 'di ba mm-hmm. lahat na online ang mga sagot ay pwedeng searchable sa internet pwede mo namang i-contact yung classmate mo agad 'di ba so uh, what are the ways on how we can prevent cheating so that begs the question how do we improve uh, mm-hmm. how we give assessments to students and one of the things that i do this or tackle this problem is that I give out personalized exercises for each student. Let's say, for example, I teach how to convert decimal to binary mm-hmm. to octal and hexadecimal. This is all. Hat kayo iba iba ng iko convert na numbers. And the second mm-hmm. one, when it comes to coding, I think nagbibigay ako ng more na talagang pipigay niyo creativity mo. So let's say, for example, let's take some example. I'm teaching about introduction to Python. So, sure, pa kailangan niya print, pang input and output statements, uh, variables, mm-hmm. tapos arithmetic operators. So, let's see for example, meron kang tindahan. <laughs> meron kang binebentang limang products sa tindahan mo. Ang goal ng student ay gagamit siya ng input statement para magtanong doon sa binebenta niya. Then i-compute niya ngayon kung magkano yung total na binili ng customer. Mm-hmm. So, those are personalized kasi um, I require students na, oh, sige, mag-isip kayo ngayon at ibibenta niyo. Then, how are you going to apply that in code. So that's my way on how do I deal with on how we give out assessments, especially examinations to students. You meet each experience different from one another. Mm-hmm. Alam natin magkakaiba dapat siya kasi magkaiba na mo kayo na binebenta, di ba? <laughs> Ang so, there's that experience na you're involved in the, in the process of creating something. Yung iba doon ay nagtitinda ng mga uh, pagkain or yung iba doon into gaming. Para nakikita ko na they are creative and they can mm-hmm. apply that into coding. May naalala ko dito, may isa akong student na alam ko magaling siya magsulat. So, ang ginawa niya, nag, naglagay siya ng story doon sa code niya and I was like, wow! Parang that's how you make use of your creativity in your code. Parang na-amaze ako noon na Um, maybe this is working. Maybe personalized na output-based yo yu binibigay ko for a student. I try my best to do more of those personalized. Wow, actually, kuya, yung admiration ko for you, sobrang tumaas na sobra-sobra. Kasi, syempre, mahirap din kasi yun talaga, yung thinking of those things, tapos yung exam questions. Na. But I'm, uh, I'm not saying na perfect ako na teacher, di ba? I'm, I'm not. Um, so, um, <laughs> parang, I, ha- I still have I still have a lot of things to learn as a teacher. You said yeah. I'm just beginning my career uh, as a teacher as an educator and there's always the opportunity for me to improve myself again and again. Why do I need to get better on this on this career is that there are actually students that are leaning on me. There are there are students whose dreams are they want to be a programmer in the future. Maybe in my small ways I can help them through my subjects. And how can I improve their enthusiasm on how to code? So there's always a thing that in me that uh, that reminds me that hey, you need to get better because there are, there are these students uh, who need help and you need to help them. And there are these students that their their dreams okay. are uh, they want to be a programmer and they're they're I want you to pursue them in that right in their right career, di ba? Parang yun yung palagi ko na iisip na. Sobrang na proud ako sa yun and they inspire ako sa yun. Grabe ko yun. Yeah, maraming undergraduates sa uh, UPLB and medyo unsure din talaga on what kind of work they want to get into in the future. What is something na you think you can say para makonvince sila na i-consider yung pagturo? Try. Mag-volunteer kayo try. magturo. <laughs> try. Try. Ang ganun eh. You never know unless you try. Gusto mo makipag-interact sa mga tao when when you want that kind of passion in your life that you want to help people you want to teach you want to teach kids on how to be better you want to help kids on uh, on on achieving their dreams then maybe a, a teaching job is well suited for you sobrang ano talaga ako, grateful talaga ako na i had this interview with you as in Sobrang insightful and dami kong natutunan talaga about a teaching job. And parang honestly, at for a while, siguro in my life, gusto ko talaga rin magturo. Parang nakakonvince ako na magturo. At least for a while, ganun. Thank you so much, Kuya, for participating in this video. Siguro okay. parting message na lang. Um, follow your passion. <laughs> uh, 
kasi I'm not the type of person that uh, alam ko na agad yung passion ko in life it came later in, in, it came mm-hmm. when I was 19 when uh-huh. I decided that I want to teach di ba? whatever your passion is if your passion is about developing things or teaching just a thing that you're happy with j- just follow it this is our second video I hope you guys enjoyed it in the future if you have a career or work na you're curious about please don't hesitate to leave a comment and we will try our best to find someone like that and have an interview with them. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you consider subscribing or liking our page on Facebook and all of our social media links will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Kuya Sed. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Bye.